Okay, hi everybody, this is A7X Fan Ben. Today I'm going to be talking about the Vassal module. Vassal is an open source board game engine that lets you play board games over an online server. So I'm just going to go to the miniature trading forum where I have the Vassal module thread. This is usually what I link to when I talk about Vassal. So I just bring up the thread here, and then it has two links. You have to download both of them. The first one is the actual Vassal module, or the Vassal engine itself. So here, this is the official Vassal Engine uh, website. And then if you have a Mac or other operating systems, you can just click on the link. And then the second link is to the module, which I have hosted on Dropbox. This was not created by me. Uh, somebody named BJ created it back in, I think it was 2010. But then I edited, it, I edited it last year to improve it and fix a few bugs and then add some stuff to it as well. So now, you would download Vassal, and then you would download the module as well. In this thread, I actually have a guide here as to how to get it started. So you have to go to, from Vassal, you have to go from File, and then Open Module, and then you go to the folder where uh, the, Vass the Vassal module is for Pirates. And then once you load it, you can have it on your desktop. So I won't do that because I've already created an account and I already have it downloaded. So then once you have it, I have it on my desktop here, so I do just double click to start the program. And then usually it takes like a few, a few seconds to load. Um, it depends on your computer though. My computer's not super fast, so it might be faster for you. And then here you have your module menu. So I have two modules right now. I'm just gonna double click on the Pirates module to open it. And then if you wanted to edit it yourself and make your own version, you can right click on it and then hit edit from there in the module. Uh, menu. So once we have it up, this will show up. If you're a first time user, you have to type like a username and password and then you can get started from there. It's pretty basic and easy and it's always free to use. Like I said, it's open source so you can create your own modules at any time. So here's the different the startup menu. Start a new game offline. That's if you were doing something by yourself. Uh, online is what you're almost always going to use and what I pretty much always use. And then you can save games, which I'll talk about later. So I'll hit finish. And then now I have the main window up. So you can see I'm in the main room here. It has my username. I'm just going to go through these commands on the right first. So sometimes if you leave Vassal up for a while, it might disconnect you from the server, in which case you can just hit connect and get, get right back on. Um, if you want to disconnect for some reason, uh, this indicates that you're looking to play a game. The X means you're AFK away from keyboard. This is really good if you have to go to the bathroom or just have like some break that you have to take. This lets everybody know that you're not uh, right there and ready to go. And then here's the messages and stuff. Um, you can send out messages and then look at the ones that already exist as well. This is cool, this button on the right here, display server connections for all modules. So this is how you can see how many people have been on here recently. So you can see in the last 24 hours, um, and if you go to the main room, you see you can see Zerex and I played a game of uh, Vassal Tournament number two yesterday, and then in the past week, and this shows all the modules too, by the way, you can see all of them. I'm just gonna go to the Pirates one. So within the last week, there have been four different people in the main room, so you can see those here. So that's pretty cool. And then you also have the option of going to the last month. So now to start a game, the main room doesn't like when you try to bring an ocean into the main room because it's kind of like the staging area where people play games in other rooms from there. So to start a new game or a new room, just type in whatever you want the new game or new room to be called. I'm just going to hit game. And now I'm in this new room here. So to go back to the main room, you can just hit join room. This is if you right click. And then here, you can lock the room if you want. And then for other, when you see other people here, um, to communicate with them, and you, if you're not in the same room, you can private message them. I would not recommend hitting synchronize because it's caused some problems in the past. Uh, show profile, and then send wake up sends like a like a beep message to the to the other people. Um, I wouldn't really recommend that either. But um, okay, so let's say we want to create an ocean. So ocean layout. So these are the different options. So ocean only is just like that. It's about 3,000 pixels by 3,000. So that's pretty good for a two player 40 point game. It gives you enough space for that. And then ocean with non-play edges, that's what I'm gonna pick in a second. And you'll see what that looks like. 
You don't really need hexes for pirates, but if you're using a custom rule set that uses hexes, you could try that. And then build your own, I'm going to show you later as well. So we're just going to go with ocean with non-play edges for now. And then just ask which player we want to be, so I'll just pick player 1, finish, maximize the window. And then I usually bring this up to see a lot of the ocean. And so here we have our ocean right here. So first thing I usually do is the pieces window, which is right up here. These are all the different command buttons up at the top here. Um, so now we have the pieces window. So we can see the ships here, all the different ship types. Wait, there's not all of them. The module doesn't have uh, sea creatures and a few of the uh, more different and unique uh, ship types. And then we have the army units and structures. Those are for like the world game rule set and also other campaign games. And then terrain has islands and terrain. There's four different types of islands, fog, whirlpool, sargasso, reef, and then trade currents. It doesn't have icebergs, but the fog bank works pretty well because it has it looks similar in color and it also has the die, the dice on it. The coins, one through seven, unique treasure. We'll be going over that soon. There's the different all the different uh, crew chips for the different factions, as well as vents, equipment. There's actually a turtle token, which is cool, and then just different color tokens. There's different tools you can use. And then the structures, like I said, is for specific games with like a campaign game rule set. So let's say you wanted to start a game with somebody. So let's say you want to set up the ocean first or the, the islands and everything. So I'm gonna so to get one of these things onto the ocean, you basically drag it in like this. So that creates island number one. And then we let's have let's say there's just gonna be four of each island which is pretty simple. And now, one important thing with the islands is you have to hold shift and then click to reselect. So once it's not selected, I can't select it. See how it's just dragging to select all? I can't select the island, so I have to hit shift, hold that, and then click. But then you can do it for all of them. And then I'm gonna right click, and then here we can see the different commands you can give to each piece. So we can clone the islands, uh, We can. that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to move and rotate randomly in a second. You can rotate them manually if you want, and then you can rotate uh, randomly in any direction, and then you can also delete them. So I'm going to do move and rotate randomly, it's kind of fun, you can see the islands, and if you hold the CTRLM down you can see the islands go all crazy. Um, so I'm just going to have them, I'm probably just going to move them manually. So like I said, to select an island, you hold shift and then click it from there and then you can rotate it randomly if you want to or you can do it whichever direction you want to okay so let's say we have a little bit of train here too put a fog bank out there uh, let's put a couple whirlpools and then maybe a sargasso sea so that map looks alright this isn't, I'm not actually going to play a game, this is just kind of a generic uh, how-to, like, tutorial guide if you were going to start a game. And then one thing I'll mention here is the zoom. So here you have, the, like, the telescope buttons, which zooms in or out. So one of my favorites to use is fit width. It gives you a really good idea of the ocean size, but it gives you enough zoom to be able to see the details as well. So fit width is probably my favorite. Fit height and fit visible are almost the same. Um, and then you can have different percentages too. So 25% zoom, 75% would be pretty close, stuff like that. So I'm just going to go back to fit width because that's my favorite and it works pretty well for what I'm doing here. And then as for these other buttons, um, I'll just go left to right. So undo, the bomb button is undo. So let's say I drag a coin to the ocean but then I, I made a mistake so I don't actually want it. I just hit undo and then it goes away. So that undoes anything you've done. It, this includes text too. So if you if you get done to like finish your turn, you can hit, oh wait, no, I have to do something else. So you just hit undo or whatever. And then this is especially useful for moving ships and whatnot. And then this one is just if you want to give up your side, uh, become an observer, or become a different player in the game, which isn't, you don't really need it. Uh, the pieces window, you can get that out of the way to see more of the text box, but I'd recommend just keeping it up because it's so useful. Uh, the lockers I'll show you soon with explore actions. There's dice you can roll, so the red uh, dice for L range cannons and whatnot, and then the white dice, so you can see who, who goes first and all that. I haven't really used the notes button at all. And then there's actually 
a module help. And then BJ did make a module guide, which is pretty nice. So I'd recommend checking that out too. I'm gonna go over that stuff now, but you could check this out too if you wanted to. And then here you can take a picture of the map. Uh, it saves it as a PNG image, so you could go to any kind of folder you want and then have a picture. This is one of the ways I've done battle reports. Lately I've used the snipping tool because it, it it's easier to zoom in and you don't have to edit the pictures afterwards and it's also a smaller file size, but there is a picture button. Like I said, the zooms. And then this is an interesting one. It's like an overview map, so you can see the entire ocean in like a little, uh, little thumbnail button here. And then you can click to go around. So it's kind of cool if you want to zoom out without actually uh, zooming out like the main ocean part. And then here we have like the line of sight threads. I don't really use these. I haven't really used them before. I find the, um, it's kind of weird. I find the tools a lot easier to use and more intuitive, but that's an option. Okay, so let's say we want to set up for a game. So I'm going to grab a ship here. I'm not going to actually set up two fleets because it would take a while. It wouldn't take too long, but so I just dragged a ship in here. So this is a generic uh, ship, a four mast square rigged ship. I'm just going to zoom in a bit to see it better. So now I click on the ship and then from here um, to get started you could right click and then you this brings up all sorts of different things you can do with the ship. So there's all sorts of different commands. What you would do first is go to the properties and then hit change properties. But I like to use the keyboard shortcuts which you'll get used to once you play a bunch. So I would recommend just holding CTRL and shift and then hitting P. And that brings up the piece, of the piece description window. So I'm just going to type in a ship. So let's pick HMS Dover, for example. This is a simple ship um, that the English have. Four masts, decent movement, average cannons. So you can see I'm just typing in um, the different stats for the ship. And then if it had an ability, it would go here, or like a keyword or whatever. But since it doesn't have any, you don't actually have to edit that. So then once you're done, make sure to hit apply and then hit close. And then if we click the ship, now it shows up as HMS Dover and also notice the flag. The flag also changed to the Union Jack at the stern. So that's pretty cool. And then now we want to see the deck plate. So to see the deck plate, you can right click and hit properties and then go to create card or like it shows you the keyboard shortcut, just hit CTRL slash, hold CTRL and then hit the slash button. And then Notice that it's different. It doesn't show up right away, so you have to move the card to get the actual stats to show up. So don't be worried if it doesn't work at first. You just move the card a little bit, and then it should show up. So here we have the deck plate for HMS Dover. So there's no abilities, but you can see all the different stats there. So that's pretty nice. And then I'll just go through some of the other commands here. Um, most of these you won't use too much. Um, I'll show you the other ones when I start doing the different actions. But one thing... The other properties are kind of interesting. It's not really necessary, but you can change the color of the name. So you can see it change from yellow to black there. And then I could do it again. Um, I could do previous name color, switch it back to yellow. And then also there's pennants. So you can have pennant flags on the main mast. So with the keyboard shortcut, you can do different flags. So it sends its English, I'm gonna do red. But just to give you an idea, so there's pirate, American, French, Spanish, all sorts of different pennant colors. So then I'll just do red. So now I have my ship, so I can start. So let's say this was home, my home island, so I'm gonna touch the bow of the ship to the home island. And now we still need gold though. So let's get some gold in here. So I'm just gonna grab some coins, and then I'm just gonna drag them into the playing area. And then it's gonna grab five, and then I'm gonna grab a unique treasure as well, why not? So a unique treasure, um, you can also create it in your locker, which I'll show soon. This one, to get to the properties, you just hit CTRLP, and then it brings this up. So let's say I want a unique treasure, so I just hit that. And then if you don't know the ability, or if you don't uh, you don't want to type it out, you can just go to the search for a miniature function and miniature trading. Go to the Pirate CSG. This is how I create UTs, and this is often how I uh, this is often how I create ships and crew as well. Because sometimes the ability text, you won't know the exact ability text. So it's easier, and it's also usually faster to just copy it rather than trying to type it out. 
So here I have the text, so I just copy that, X that out, go back to Vassal, paste, boom. So now I have unique treasure monkey's paw right here. And then if you just hit CTRLP again, it comes up with the ability once you apply it. So to flip a coin over, you just hit CTRLF, and then that flips it over so nobody can see it. You can also clone them, delete them, of course, and then stack is what I'll be doing next. So you can select all the coins by clicking the mouse, then holding and dragging it. Select all the coins, CTRLS to stack them. And then once they're in the pile in the top left, you can shuffle them so nobody knows uh, the order or where they are. And then here, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see the different islands. I'm just gonna drag another ship here. Just pretend that uh, my opponent's home island is like right here. And then, so six coins, I'll just do three. So here you can draw multiple coins from the pile at once. So you just hit the number, hit okay. And then from there, click on the pile and drag it. And now I have three coins. Notice how it says there's three different ones in the text box. So that's pretty useful in the chat window. You can make sure that you have the correct number if you have any doubts about it. So it looks like only one coin in the pile, but there's actually a lot. Same with on the islands. It looks like there's only one, but there's they're underneath there as well. Okay, so now we have our gold. We have everything set up. So let's say we want to start playing the game. Let's say you want to do a move action with the Dover. So I'm going to zoom back in over here. And let's say the Dover is going to move to this island down here. So to move, the first thing you want to do is hit rotate on bow. Usually I don't use a keyboard shortcut with this because it would it takes a little bit longer because you have to hold a lot of things down at the same time. So usually I just right click and then I hit rotate on bow. And then here you can drag it to whichever heading you want. So if I'm going to the island about there looks about right. And now in, in real life, the ship wouldn't be overlapping the island because you would move right out from there but here it's just a little bit it's just like a quirk of the module so now to move instead of using the tools that you i saw that we saw earlier instead of that you want to use the keyboard shortcuts so if you right click on the ship you can learn the different keyboard shortcuts so it's ctrl and shift if you hold those down and then hit l or s that moves the ship that distance so there's already an automatic movement uh, measurement like built into the module so I just moved S plus S with the Dover and there's no tools or anything in the way there's nothing it's very simple and then let's say let's say I didn't really like that heading that much I can just hit undo with undo you'll notice some a lot of times you have to hit it twice because it registers like any movement as the sh of the ship or any rotations as like two movements so you might have to hit undo a couple times and then let's say I just want to go a little bit this way so I can just redo the move. So that's how you move. Let's say my opponent was at this island as well, um, right here. And let's say, I'll teach you how to make a crew too. Let's say I had, a, I had a captain from the beginning of the game. So here is an English crew. So once again, I just drag, I drag it from the pieces window into the ocean. And then once when it's still selected, I hit, I hold CTRL and press P. So with crew, to bring up the properties window, unlike ships, you don't have to hold shift. You just hit uh, CTRL and P. So let's say I have a captain here for three points. Ship may move and shoot with the same move action. So that's the captain ability. Then I click it, the name comes up under here. Let's say I have it face down though. You can hit CTRL H to hide crew. Um, and then you can still see the properties here. So you have the name, points, ability. So it works just like the ships, but you can hide them if you want. So let's say it's my turn again. I'm gonna move the Dover. So I'm gonna rotate on bow. And then I'm just gonna use the shortcuts, CTRL, Shift, S. And then I'm gonna go again here. And then I'm gonna dock at the island. And then you can move manually. So here, here I don't wanna move the full S. So let me undo that. Say I was here, if I move the full S, I'll be there. So I don't like that. So I'm just gonna move it manually right where I want it. So I'm gonna dock. And then since I have a captain, I can shoot. So here I'm gonna hit CTRL H, captain revealed. So now I'm gonna shoot at this two master here. So to bring up the tools, you can either drag them in like this, drag them into the ocean, or you can start it right from the ship's bow. So if you don't hit shift, you just hit CTRL and then hold that and hit L. That brings up the tools as well. 
So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. So now I'm going to shoot at this two master here because I have a captain. So there's the main, the main mast, the middle cannon, and then I have this one here. I mean, this one's it's pretty basic because this is pretty much point blank range. So it's not very difficult to see that most of the guns are in range. And then sometimes it's kind of hard to select the tools if you already have them underneath other stuff. It gets kind of complex sometimes. And then, so it looks like, yep, it looks like all four cannons are in range. So now I'm going to go ahead and shoot because I have a captain. So usually I would say like Dover shooting at ship, whatever ship it is. Just like in real life, you want to use the chat window just to tell people like what you're doing and then exactly what you're doing. About a stern, 3S, 3L, 3L, 3S, just to remind them of the cannons. You don't have to do that last one, but you could. So let's say I want to capture this ship though, just for reference. So I'm only going to shoot until it's derelict. I don't want to sink the ship. So if I'm shooting bow to stern, I would shoot the S range gun first. So I use the white die for the short range cannon. So that misses. Second one misses as well. That one misses as usual. This is pretty typical for me. I seem to have really bad dice luck in the module for some reason, which is pretty typical of me in real life too. But anyway, so I have one hit. So I'm going to take out one of the masts. And then notice um, there was a little fire. I'll do that again here so you can see it. I'll zoom in. And then here in the properties menu, if you right click, you can see mast one, mast two. So you hold CTRL and then you just click the number of the mast. So the lower the number, the farther it is towards the front of the ship. So CTRL one would be the first mast. So the mizzen mast would be CTRL two in this case because it's a two master. If you hit it once, the ship catches on fire, which is only the case if you're using like a fire pot specialist or fire shot or something like that. So you want to hit it twice for regular mast elimination. Okay, so now um, let's say my opponent is going to explore, or let's just say, let's say it's the next turn and they, they don't give the ship an action or whatever. So now it's the Dover's turn again, so I'm going to shoot again. So I'm just going to say what guns I might be shooting because I already know they're in range. So that misses, that misses, and then I say some more guns that I'm going to shoot. Okay, so now the ship is dismasted. So I've dismasted this two master, eliminate the other mast. So that's how a ship becomes derelict. And then if you wanted to sink it, you can keep shooting. And then here, um, and then once you've sunk, you, once you've sunk it, you can move it off the play area or you could just delete it. Okay, so now that that ship's gone, I can eliminate these range markers because I don't need them anymore. And then let's say now I want to explore the island. So to explore, you want to use your player locker, which is up here in the top left, one of these main buttons. So I click that, and then you can only see your own locker because it's like a private uh, area. And then here, I'm just going to select the entire stack of coins because I know there's three there. And then I'm just going to drag all of them into the locker at once. And then there's a little preview, so you can flip them, and then we can see what I've got here. So now you can decide which coins to take. So monkey's paw is face up, so I have to take that one. And then... These two, I have enough cargo space to take both of them. So I'm gonna, when they're still in my locker, I'm gonna select both of them and hit CTRL F to flip them. And then I'm gonna drag them back into the ocean and then put them on the ship's deck plate, just like you would in real life. So that's an explore action. And then let's say I wanna move back home, rotate on bow. It's gonna take me two turns to get back here. So a couple turns later, I come back home and then these two coins get deposited at my home island. So that's pretty much how you would do it. And then the repairs are pretty self-explanatory. Similar, it's just like mass elimination. Let's say I had my the four mass missing and then I just hit CTRL one to get it back to repair. So those are the basic actions. Uh, I'm just gonna detail a couple little specific things here, like a submarine, for example. Uh, the module doesn't really have sea creatures and some of the more rare ship types. It does have submarines. CTRL U is what you use to submerge the ship. Um, and then a fort. A fort is pretty unique compared to a ship, obviously. You can also use the end, or not end, but you can use the page up, page down buttons to go uh, all over the different parts of the map as well. So a fort has a little bit different... Um, it, notice that it starts with all eight flags. So if you wanted like a four flag fort, you can eliminate the same way you would with masts on a ship, you can eliminate the flags. And then that now it would be a four flag fort. So that's how you would do forts. Um, 
There's a few other specific things to know about. Uh, the range measure rosette is decent. Uh, this, this is a fun way to measure cannon ranges if you want. Just keep in mind that it doesn't really account for masts blocking lines of fire. So for that, you'll want to use the regular tools like the LNS tools. Um, the long range ruler is pretty cool. Notice, I'll zoom in. Notice it has four L's and four S's attached to it. So this is good for measuring island distances uh, when you're setting up the game. So if we drag it so that it's hitting this island here. So this island right here is about um, about three L away. And of course you can just, you can do islands at any distance from each other, but if you want to measure them like a specific distance, then that would be a good way to do it. There's like a sticky note. If you want to use that, I haven't really used that much. And that's mostly how the module works. Now I'm just going to show you quick how to save a game. There's a couple of things over here about module, about Vassal. Those can be useful too when you're new. One thing with the preferences I want to say is if it says center on opponent's moves, I think the default for that is for it to be checked. You want to uncheck center on opponent's moves because that means when an opponent moves something and you're at a different part of the map, like let's say let's say you're down here and then I move the Dover, you automatically get brought up to where the Dover is. So you want to uncheck uh, center on opponent's moves. So just make sure that's unchecked. The other preferences should be pretty okay as the defaults. Um, okay, so let's say this game isn't finished, but somebody has to leave. So I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to hit Save Game As, and then I'm just going to save it to my desktop. I'm just going to hit Game 4, and then I'm just going to hit Save. And then you can enter comments if you want. It's not really necessary. So then here it says, once it says game saved, you know you're good. And then you can check for the file on the desktop too, just to make, to double check. And then now that I've saved the game, that's pretty much good to go. So now I can just go back to the main room if I'm looking for another game to start or whatever. Or I can just X out the module. So now I'm just going to start um, game five. I'm just going to start a new room. I'm just going to show you the custom ocean creation real quick. So build your own. Here I can just join player one. And here you can see the custom ocean window. So this is really cool if you want to build your own ocean with like a lot of uh, tiles. So one ocean is about 3000 by 3000 pixels. That's the one we just saw. So it's good for 40 point games, but if you want to have like a campaign game or maybe like a five or six player game at any point level, you're probably going to want to go a bit bigger. So you can also use like a hex board if you wanted to, if you had a custom rule set with that. I'm just going to create an ocean that has like a like edges on the sides and then a double ocean in the middle so it's a little bit wider. So I'm just going to go around here. And then these ones, um, this is for like the some of the campaign games. So you can see huge ocean, it's way too big. So that was, I'll just cancel because that was kind of weird. That's for like a campaign if you want to play like a huge game. It, it was created for a specific like rule set. Um, but anyway, so you can just add columns, add rows. Uh, just keep in mind what you want. If you're using edges, you have to do it all manually. So if you want two oceans in the middle, you would maybe do that first and then uh, do the stuff from there. And you might have to set it up once or twice to get the hang of it. But it's pretty simple. So the way the ones I'm doing right now, like corner and sides, those are going to be those like brownish colored um, parts of the board where you can put deck plates, which is really nice. There's nothing wrong with doing an ocean without that sort of space, but I like the area where deck plates can go. It's just a convenience factor. So I'm just going to hit fit width again, and then I'm going to zoom out a little more actually. And then I'm just going to go to a ship. Two master, five master. So now you can see this ocean is twice as wide, same height. And then if I want to create a card, I have plenty of space for deck plates here for all the ships. So the bigger the game, the bigger you want the ocean to be. But for most two player 40 point games, for example, or even like three player, four player 40 point games, the regular standard ocean would probably be big enough for most of those. And that's pretty much it. So I showed you how to save the game when you're done. Uh, that's a really nice part of Vassal is that you can save games and continue them whenever you want to.
Um, oh, and then this one, I didn't use this one. So let's say uh, you, you've explored an island and then you wanna leave it market explored. You can use the token here and then that shows that you've been on the island and then you can change the color. So let's say it was like the, let's say it was the French or the Americans, maybe you'd wanna use blue and then maybe for the pirates or the cursed, you might use black. So you can color code it by faction. The other nice thing I like about this is, let's say this ship is uh, derelict, and then I give it a scuttling attempt, which succeeds. You can put the token at the stern. This is usually what I do to denote that a ship will be scuttled on our next turn. So that's just good to remind yourself and everybody else that the ship is gonna sink soon, just so everybody remembers. There's also a turtle token for the unique treasure, which is pretty cool. And then they can move, <clears throat> they can move S with the with the tool. And yeah, like I said, the structures and army units are for specific campaign games, so you don't really have to worry about that. I edited the module to add them in. Um, and like I said, there's not sea creatures and some of the other ship types on the module. I did add a ten mass junk because that wasn't in the module either. It's a little off, but I did add it. There's not like detailed artwork, but it works pretty well. So that's cool to have 10 masters available in the module as well. And that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. And I'm just gonna X out the module here and it'll ask you if you wanna save the game, which is nice. So if, if you ever forget to save, you can always, um, you can just hit yes here if you wanted to. So I'm not going to, but. So that's pretty much it. That's how you use the vessel module for Pirate CSG. This is A7X Van Ben, uh, so long for now.